Hi, I'm Scott the Miniature Maniac, and today we're going to define a bunch of commonly used miniature painting vocabulary terms. Make sure to stick around until the end of the video to hear an exciting announcement. What up, mini family? Miniature painters, myself included, used a bunch of artsy terms, and it's come to my understanding that not everyone knows what these terms are. So I want to make this video as a way to get people up and running as to what these words mean so they can understand a paint plan from someone, decrypt feedback from someone, or understand one of my videos better. But before we get into the words, let's discuss a few things beforehand. Number one, a lot of these words mean something outside of the context of miniature painting. Today, we're just focusing on miniature painting. Number two, a lot of these topics could probably have their own fully dedicated videos. These are all brief definitions of these words. And number three, a lot of these videos do have fully dedicated videos created on my channel for them. So if you want to learn more about a certain vocab term, check the description below for a possible video that goes into a deep dive. All right, let's get into the vocab, starting with the biggest one contrast. Very often people receive feedback saying your thing needs more contrast and what this means is the measure of difference between your brightest highlight and also your darkest shadow. If someone says hey that cloth needs more contrast that means you need to make your highlight brighter or your shadow darker or even sometimes both of those things. It's also worth mentioning that the size of your overall dark shadow and overall bright highlight contribute to what contrast looks like. If you have a massive highlight and a tiny shadow, while you do have the right contrast, a larger dark shadow would help to make it seem as though you have even more contrast. It's also worth noting that contrast doesn't only need to be the difference between lightness and darkness, it can also be the difference between finish and also color. For instance, a matte black and a glossy black have contrast simply because the difference in their finish. And also when it comes to color, red and green contrast really nicely because they're on opposite sides of the color wheel as does blue and orange and yellow and purple. Next time someone gives you the feedback that you need more contrast, think about not only increasing your shadows and highlights, but also possibly maybe mixing a contrasting color into the highlight and the shadow to get even more of that juicy contrast. Number two, saturation. I will oftentimes tell people that they should consider using one or two saturated colors. And what I'm referring to here is how intense a color is. The red swatch on the left in this example is more saturated than the right swatch. As the color desaturates, it gets closer and closer to gray. It doesn't necessarily refer to how bright or how dark a color is, but how intense its coloration is. Speaking of brightness, let's go on to that. Number three, brightness. While not necessarily a vocab term people use a lot, brightness is a good word to define because it's linked to saturation. Brightness refers to how light or how dark a color is. When you darken a color, it can go all the way to black, and when you brighten a color, it can go all the way to white. When you're on either end of the spectrum with paint, you have a desaturated color. Right in the middle is when it is most saturated. But if we were to look at this range in black and white, we would notice that indeed, at white, it's most bright, and at black, it's most dark. Number four, zenithal. Oftentimes this word can be used to describe an undercoat, but it can also just describe your general approach to how you're going to shade and highlight a miniature. This word means that I'm going to highlight and shade my miniature with the consideration that my brightest source of light is above, like a sun at its highest point in the sky or its zenith. As an example of something that is not zenithly highlighted, considered an heavy metal marine. That miniature has no consideration for where the light source is or how bright it is. It is equally highlighted all over the miniature. Number five, wet blending. Wet blending is the act of blending two colors on a miniature while still wet to achieve a seamless transition between the two tones. I don't know why I did this. This is the blending move. <laughs> 
Number six, glazing. Glazing is a technique that describes applying a very diluted color to your miniature as a tint. Sometimes it can be used to achieve a blend via blurring a transition, but oftentimes it can also be used just to tint a color one way or the other. Glazing can be done with a paintbrush, but it can also be done with an airbrush. Oftentimes, the word glaze is used as a noun to refer to a product that is meant to be used for glazing. For instance, Games Workshop makes several glazes that are used specifically for the technique of glazing. Glaze, 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 glaze. Number seven, feathering. Yet another blending technique, feathering refers to taking a fairly opaque color, applying it to your miniature, cleaning the brush, and with a still wet brush and still wet paint, feathering out the color to create a transition from from translucent totally to opaque color. Number eight, loaded brush. Loaded brush is a technique that expands on wet blending by making it faster, but also making it more complicated. The general gist of the technique is that you have two colors in your paintbrush, and when you apply them, they blend as you apply them. I'm not very good at this technique, but from what I understand, the color in the tip of your brush is best if it's thick and in small quantity, and the color in the body of your brush is best if it's thinner and also in larger quantity. This technique, while it is fairly old, was championed by Ben Comets in the miniature painting community, and you can see it on display on videos on Painting Buddha and also on his Patreon. Number nine, two brush blending. Two brush blending is somewhat of a complicated technique and not one that I've tried to tackle until recording this video. Essentially the idea is that one brush is responsible for applying paint and the other brush is responsible for feathering it out and you have both brushes in your hand. This can be seen as a way to expand the feathering technique by making it simpler because you don't have to clean the brush that applies paint in between wanting to feather it out. But to me, it kind of seems needlessly complicated, but maybe I'm just being a baby. There are people that swear by this technique. Number 10, OSL. Object source lighting is a technique where you have a light source in your scene that is casting light on your miniature. For example, on my recent crystal brush entry, I had a fire that was casting light on my character. It doesn't need to be as complicated as that. You can do something simple like a glowing hand or sprites, etc. Apparently, I only use hot pink when doing OSL. Number 11, NMM. Non-metallic metal describes the technique of painting metal while using non-metallic paint. For instance, when doing steel, using grays, whites, and blacks, and when doing gold, using yellows and browns. A very basic question about NMM that I get a lot is, why even bother doing it? And the answer to that question is that it displays very good understanding of how light interacts with an object like metal. It shows good technique like blending. And also, it often just looks more striking than normal TMM. Speaking of TMM, that's the next one. Number 12, TMM. You can't talk about NMM and not talk about true metallic metal, which is essentially just using paint that has reflective pigment in it, metallic paint, to paint your metal objects. It's sort of like the opposite of NMM. Number 13, dry brushing. Dry brushing is a technique wherein you put some paint in your bristles and then remove the majority of it and then apply it to the raised detail of the miniature. This is a fairly expedient way of highlighting your miniature, albeit at the cost of getting somewhat of a dusty look. Number 14, tabletop standard. TTS is a term that often describes a certain level of quality when it comes to a paint job, but the problem is, is that everyone's level of tabletop standard is different. Essentially, it describes how well you would paint your rank and file troops in an army. It's not gonna be amazing, but it's gonna get the job done, and in a unit, they're gonna look real good. Number 15, edge highlighting. Edge highlighting is a technique used to highlight the very edges of the detail of our miniatures. And while it's easy to describe, it's much more difficult to master. At the end of edge highlighting, what you have is a miniature with much more pronounced details, which is pretty important when it comes to painting minis because they're so tiny and they need help getting all that detail to pop out nicely. Number 16, layering. Layering is another highlighting technique and describes creating distinct layers of color to develop a highlight. And while it doesn't create a 
seamless blend necessarily. If you use enough layers and you back up three feet, it can look pretty dang seamless. Number 17, washing. When you wash a miniature, you are flooding it with very thin paint and the surfactant in the paint will draw the wash into the recesses of the miniature. Many companies sell wash products, but people have been known to experiment with their own home brewed concoctions. Much like edge highlighting pronounces the details via brightening the edges, washing pronounces the details via darkening the recesses. Number 18, stippling. Stippling is a paint application technique and it refers to applying your paint in a dotted way. It can imply something about the texture of something you are painting, but it also can help you achieve a blend. Say you have two colors next to each other, a red and an orange. You could take that red color and start to dot into the orange to create something of a blend. Number 19, pinning. When you pin a miniature, you are drilling a hole into it, gluing in some type of metal cylinder, oftentimes a paper clip or a brass rod, drilling another hole into a receiving part, and then gluing both parts together. This is often done on appendages of pewter miniatures or when attaching miniatures to their bases. Number 20, volumes. This word is often used to describe the 3D shapes that a miniature is composed of. The shoulders are spheres, the legs are cylinders, etc. When you highlight and shade a miniature, considering its volumes, you are not only putting the highlights and shadows in the correct spots, but you are using the correct shape highlights per what volume it represents. Spanish miniature painters have two favorite words. One is lights and one is volumes. Well guys, that's gonna finish off this video. If you think I missed any major miniature painting vocab terms, make sure to leave them in the comment section below and also define them so that we can all learn together. Well, at the beginning of this video and also last week, I teased about a new piece of merch. Actually, I think I'm wearing it right now. <sighs> That's the only time I'm gonna strip tease on this channel. Today we launched the Black Metal Miniac logo t-shirt, which you can find linked in the description below. And also if I'm YouTubing correctly, it should also appear as a picture below this video. If I'm not, it's also linked. But as a special thank you to my patrons, I'm also doing a limited time beanie with this logo on it. Let me go grab it. Oh, look, I'm matching. Some of my Canadian friends call this a toque. Apparently, I've never heard of that word in my life. So starting today until May 25th, you can pick up one of these beanies if you become a Dark Wizard patron. And all the information is linked at my Patreon account in the description below. And that's the only way you can get this hat. It won't be for sale. And I know some of you might be like, well, why don't you sell it? And the reason is, is because I use Teespring to ship and fulfill my merchandise now. And they don't do hats like this. And I actually enjoy reaching out to local artists, finding the art and putting together the makers that can put these things together and selling them. And this is a fun way for me to kind of sell merchandise without needing to fulfill it long term. So if you're interested in picking up this hat, you can find it on my Patreon account at patreon.com slash miniac. Also, another reason why I'm not selling it is because I just wanted to give something special to my patrons who have been supporting me for some as long as two years or more. They're the people that are really enabling me to do this thing full time. So I can't ever really return the amount of gratitude I have for that in some kind of physical way, but this is at least something. So thank you guys and gals so much for the continued support. It means the world to me. This light is so bright. So as a recap, this shirt and also the old Miniac logo t-shirt and also some new stickers are gonna be available on my Teespring forever. They're not limited edition, but this hat is only available to patrons between May 10th and May 25th. So if you're interested in getting it, consider becoming a dark wizard. All right, let's finish this video. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you like list oriented videos, which is kind of weird, you can find a playlist of those videos linked in the top right hand corner of the screen. If you like the channel and you want to support it, you can find links in the description that enable you to do that, namely a Patreon campaign with a bunch of fun rewards, such as access to my personal Discord server where you and I can chat and day of the week about your personal painting projects or your favorite slice of NYC pizza. Really anything goes in that server. You can also find a link to my Amazon shopping affiliate link that you can use while shopping on Amazon. 
subscribe or die, <laughs> and most importantly, don't forget to As a general rule of thumb, thumb, TTS, wow, the receiving part, and then gluing both parts together. Patreon campaign. <laughs>